This is Dean Arish, working as a assistant professor in our AC department. And today's topic is clamping circuit theory. So, in a previous session, we observed that what is the clamping and what is the negative clamping and the positive clamping. So, in this session, we are going to observe what is the clamping circuit theorem. So, here this clamping circuit theorem states that so under any steady state condition for any input waveform. The ratio of the area under the output voltage curve in the forward direction to the, to the in the reverse direction is equal to the ratio is Rf by Rf. So means that so based on the statement, it is represented as area under the forward direction is represented as Af, and area under the reverse direction is represented as Af. So that is the reason for any input waveform under the steady state condition, the area under the forward direction to the reverse direction. So means this is the area under the forward direction to the area under the reverse direction that is equal to the ratio of Rf to the Rf. So this is called as the clamping circuit theorem here. Now we are going to prove the statement here, how it is equal to the areas under the forward direction and areas under the reverse direction, that ratio of how it is equal to your RF to the OR, where RF is the diode forward resistance, R is the, the resistance of the given circuit, means what is the resistance we use at the output side. So, for this case, so here I consider the a spare wave form here. So, means that we know that, so once, uh, why, so when the diode is a forward bias, Capacitor is charging towards the maximum voltage. Then, when the diode is a uh, reverse bias, what happens? Your capacitor is discharging towards the minimum voltage. So, and slowly, this is the slowly discharging towards the minimum voltage. So, hence, at all these other areas. And here, this area is represented as area under the forward direction. AR is represented as area under the reverse direction. But some of the cases we are showing like this, suppose if the curve like this, so this is also a, a valid statement for a uh, given input signal and here this area is represented as under the forward direction and here this area is represented as area under the reverse direction. But for a representation point, we, we, absorb, we are identifying that both the areas are not equal, but theoretically practically based on this clamping circuit theorem statement whatever the input waveform under the city state condition this area under the forward direction to the area under the reverse direction is equal to the ratio of rf by r that we are going to show you af by ar that is equal to your rf by r for this case here i am going to consider a negative clamper circuit so negative clamping circuit or it is also called as the positive peak clamper circuit. If you observe this uh, negative clamping circuit, so what happens here for a given input signal, let us say if the input signal is a sinusoidal signal and let us say this is the VA and this magnitude is represented as the VM and here this magnitude is represented as another peak voltage but the polarity is uh, negative here. And during the positive portion of the given input signal, based on the utilization of this diode here, so what happens here, this is anode and here this is the cathode and cathode is connected to your ground points. And during this 0 to pi duration, let us say, if it is the 0 to pi duration, this is, and due to this, under this 0 to pi duration, the input signal are con linearly increasing towards the plus Vm voltage again from Vm to your zero. So hence, the more positive voltage positively passing through the anode of this diode with respect to your cathode, hence, du during this zero to pi interval, diode is acts as a conducting mode. Diode is acts as your conducting mode. Then, this pi to two pi duration, 
what happened? The pi to 2 pi duration input is changing towards the negative peak direction. Hence, a negative voltage is passing through the anode of the diode with respect to the cathode. Hence, diode is entered into the non conducting state. So, that is the reason. From these two points, 0 to pi interval, diode is entered into the conducting state. So, when it is entered into the conducting state, it means diode is acts as the followed by a diode. Similarly, the pi to 2 pi duration, diode is entered into the non conducting mode. So, means the diode is entered into the reverse bias mode of operation here. So, when the diode is a reverse bias, and that state is represented as a non conducting state under the interval is i to 2 pi duration. When the diode is a forward bias and the state is represented as a conducting mode, and that interval we consider as 0, 0 to pi. So, based on this diode conducting and non conducting states, now we are going to show that the area under the forward direction to the area under the reverse direction is equal to the ratio of Rf to the OR. So, here where we need to consider Rf is the diode forward resistance, R is this resistance used in internal resistance. Now, we will see what happens here and we know that and during the when the diode is a reverse bias, what happens your capacitor is trying to discharge or to attain your minimum value. When the diode is a conducting, the capacitor is trying to attain your maximum voltage that is nothing but your charging. So, based on that, if I consider the a square waveform here, so here I consider this is T1, T2 and the T3. So, first I am going to consider this T2 to T3 interval. So, this T2 to T3 interval, what is the voltage here under steady state condition, the input voltage max, maximum is your a negative peak voltage. During this negative, due to this negative peak voltage, here what happens your diode is and enters into the reverse bias mode, hence diode is acts as the non conducting state. So, if the diode is a non conducting state, now the capacitor is trying to discharge towards the minimum value here. So, that is the reason. Here I mentioned this point. So, here I consider the input in the square waveform and the interval I consider this T2 to T3 interval. Your diode is uh, acts as a non conducting state, and the state is represented as your half state. Under this half state, the capacitor is now trying to discharge it, and the discharging current is here represented as your IR. The discharge current is represented as your I. From this, we need to identify the, the areas here. So, for this case, let us say if the diode is a reverse bias. Now let us take this is the capacitor is a capacitor and input side this is your V8. And if you observe this previous diagram, this is the clamping circuit. So during this T2 to T3 interval, so what happens your diode is replaced with your off state. Off state means what is the equivalent model? So when it is equal off state here, so means it contains a reverse resistance that is represented as RR. So, first I am showing this diode is followed by us. What is the equal values? It is represented as Rf along with the cutting voltage Vega. If the diode is a reverse bias, it is represented as this resistance is represented as R reverse resistance along with some cutting voltage Vega. But here I consider the cutting voltage V gamma is a zero, hence when diode is a forward bias, that equivalent circuit is equivalent circuit. So, this equivalent circuit is replaced with Rf and V gamma is a 0 means and we know that if any voltage source is represented with a 0, so that should be represented as a short circuit model. So, hence this V gamma is replaced with a short circuit. Now, it will contain only Rf. Similarly, when the diode is a reverse bias, so, means it contains a reverse resistance and the cutting voltage is a 0 means it is replaced with a short circuit. Hence, it is R. So, that is the reason. So, during this T2 to T3 interval, so here the diode is acts as the off state means non conducting mode. Hence, diode is a replaced with off state. If it is off state, the equivalent circuit contains reverse resistance, but I consider the cutting voltage is 0. Hence, 
then this is r and now let us take this is square root form and here this is now we are going to find out v naught now from this so which current goes here this current is i i across this capacitor so this is the capacitor and here we know that rr is means where rr is the reverse diode resistance here yeah? r is the user resistance and we know that the reverse resistance is always very high means rr is much much greater than of r let us consider if the diode reverse resistance is much much greater than of r so what happens if these two resistances are parallel here diode reverse resistance and external resistances are parallel so one resistance is the maximum and one resistance is the minimum so if the two resistances are different different resistances if the those two resistances are parallel combination and that parallel resistance always approximately equal to your minimum resistance means if rr is parallel with r where rr is a very large r is a minimum this parallel resistance offers approximately equal to your minimum resistance the minimum resistance is r hence this circuit i'm going to redraw so this parallel combination this rr rr parallel combination it gives that equal resistance is equal to minimum resistance that minimum resistance is r and here this is your input voltage and the capacitor and here we are going to find out the v naught and this current is i r now we know that so how we are going to find out the area for this case we know that the q is represented as c into v so if i am applying the differentiation mean the rate of change of charge how the capacitor is charging or it is charging that can be identified by dq by dt is equal to c into d by dt of v so i applied here the q mean this is the rate of change of charge with respect to time that is nothing but dq by dt that is equal to c into d by dt of v so we know that the rate of change of charge with respect to time is represented as your current means dq by dt is represented as current means i is equal to c into d by dt of v so now i'm going to identify the discharge current so hence how we are going to eliminate this different differentiation term so that is a reason both sides applying the integration here applying the integration both side now what happens integral of i into dt that is equal to c into v so the c is a constant and integration and i am applying integration of for this d by dt of v means while you are applying integration of this d by dt of v so this integration and differentiation will get cancelled and become c into v again we know that this c into v is nothing but your q means q integral of i into dt so means the rate the charge the either charging or a discharging current in terms of current we are measuring that is so that q is equal to integral of i into dt now here we are going to find out this discharge so that is how we are going to write here that is this q i am representing as a q small q so integral of i into dt hence q is equal to integral at which interval we are identifying this discharge current the interval is t2 to t3 so hence this is t2 to t3 i means under this t2 to t3 interval which current is a flows here discharge current is a flows that discharge current here we represented as u ir hence it is represented as ir into d now from this so what is ir how to write this ir so ir means with respect to your applied input voltage vi to the resistance with the ratio of voltage to the resistance so which resistance are there in the circuit equivalent circuit the circuit is r so hence ir is equal to vi by r so hence here i am representing this the q is equal to the integral t2 to t3 ir is replaced by vi by r into dt so from this here r is a constant and i am getting the outside this is 1 by r integral of t2 to t3 vi into dt 
So this VA means which input voltage you apply your reverse voltage ends. I'm writing, rewriting this equation. I'm rewriting this equation. So how do I am rewriting this equation here? So yeah, I'm going to rewrite this equation. So the Q is equal to 1 by R integral of T2 to T3. So P R into T2, reverse voltage we are applying. So by using this one, so means if you want to identify the area, we need to apply the integration with respect to your limits. So that is the reason. So this uh, integral of V R into T T that I'm going to write the area under the uh, reverse voltage. So that is the reason. I'm going to write this Q is equal to 1 by R into your A R. So we, here I'm assuming that this area under the reverse cycle is integral of T2 to T3 into V R into T. So this I assume that is the area under the reverse cycle. So this is Q here. Similarly, now we need to identify what happens under the forward cycle means under the input signal is in a positive direction A. So for the same circuit, let us consider your input is again. So already we observed this is the T1 duration, this is T2 and T3. So just now we observed that the interval is T2 to T3 duration. Now I'm going to observe the interval is T1 to T2 duration. T1 to T2 duration. So in the T1 to T2 duration, so what happens your diode is so more volt, this is anode, and here this is the cathode. And here I consider this is the signal, this is your input signal, and this is T1 interval and a T2 interval. For this interval, and the more positive voltage is passing through your anode with respect to your cathode. So here the cathode is connected to ground potential. So more positive voltage across the anode compared with the cathode ends your the diode is acts as a conducting state or a conducting module. So here the diode is acts as your conducting state. So if the diode is a conducting or if the diode is a forward bias, it should be replaced with the equivalent circuit is diode recurrent circuit is it contains a diode forward resistance along with your current voltage that is V1. But here I am assuming that the current voltage is a zero, hence under this condition the equivalent model of this diode is represented as RF, RF is RF and this V gamma is a replaced with a zero means any voltage source contains a zero it should be replaced with your short circuit hence the V gamma is replaced with your short circuit. Now I am going to redraw this circuit so what happens now this is capacitor is a capacitor Diode is replaced with a, a diode forward resistance that is represented as RF and again this node contains R and here we are applying the VI. What is the VI here? We are applying this one. The interval is T1 to T2 and here we are going to find out the V0. Under this, now this is capacitor. So RF means here diode is replaced with a diode forward resistance. R is R, this is R is R. Only this diode is replaced with uh, based on the equivalent model. During this T1 to T2 interval, here the diode is acts as a forward bias mode and the state is represented as a conducting state. Hence, it is replaced with this equivalent circuit here. Now we'll see, we know that so when the diode is a forward bias, it offers very small forward resistance here. And and based on that point, here I am assuming this RF is much much less than of your R. RF is much much less than of R. Why? Because of the if the diode is a conducting, it offers very small resistance. That is the reason. Here I mentioned this one. RF is much much less than R. Now what happens? So from the above circuit, this RF is parallel with R then what is the equivalent resistance? So the both the resistance are default and the parallel resistance is always equal to your minimum resistance. So here the which one is the minimum resistance? RF is the minimum resistance compared with your R. Hence, 
the parallel combination of this RF and R is approximately equal to your minimum resistance is R. Hence, I'm going to redraw this circuit. So the circuit is equivalent to your which resistance of RF. This RF and R parallel combination is replaced with your RF. Now here I'm going to find out this V now. And here we are applying the VI and the VI is T1 to only T2 interval. So we are considering only T1 to T. So here what happens here during this forward cycle, capacitor is now trying to charge in towards your maximum voltage. And now the capacitor is charging towards the maximum and that current flows your IM here. So here now capacitor is trying to charge towards the maximum. So just now we discussed that the Q in terms of the current is represented as Q is equal to integral of I into dt. Now here, so the discharge, uh, you know, uh, when T2 to T3 interval, we assume that Q is equal to some 1 by R into AR here. But here, this under this T1 to T2, the charge I'm representing as the Q dash. So here, this Q dash, the Q dash is represented as integral of which interval here we are taking T1 to T2, which current is the flow is your IF into your DT. Now from this representation, the Q dash is represented as integral of T1 to T2. So we know that IF means, again IF means, it is the ratio of input voltage to your resistance. So which voltage we are applying your VI? And from this circuit, what is the resistance here? It offers only the RF here. The total resistance is RF here. So hence, IF is represented as VI by RF here. Hence, this IF is represented as by VI by RF into DT. So from this, here there, VI is a linear thing, or we need to take study shared condition. So here RF is a constant, hence I am taking this Q dash is equal to 1 by RF integral of T1 to T2 VI into DT. So this is absolute when the diode is a forward voltage. So hence, again I am rewriting this equation, the QA is equal to 1 by RF integral of T1 to T2 into VF into DT. And, and based on this point, and we know that, if, so here, what I'm doing here, so here I'm assuming that we need to find out the areas. If you want to identify the areas, we need to apply the integration here. So this is T2. So now I assume this, the integral of T1 to T2 into Vf into Dt, I consider area under the forward direction. So hence, this Q dash is represented as 1 by Rf into your Af. So, we, so up, up to this point, we observe the two charges here. One is the discharge charge and another one is the charge current. Discharge current and your charge current. The charge current is represented as 1 by Rf times of your AF. And uh, discharge current we represented as this one. So, 1 by R times your, this, uh, 1 by R times your AR here, this one. Now here, let us assume that let, let charge current, so let us assume charge current equal to your discharge current means charge gain that is equal to charge loss here. Let us assume that the gain of charge equal to loss of charge. So means this is, I represent a Q dash and this is Q. So what we observe the Q dash, Q dash we observe that 1 by Rf into your AF and the Q we observe the 1 by R into your AR from the mathematical analysis. So just now we observe these two points. So now I'm going to equate these two. So Q dash is 1 by RF into AF that is equal to 1 by R into your AR. So means AF by RF that is equal to your AR by R. Now what we need to show you according to clamping circuit theorem is that under any state under any steady state conditions here, the ratio of area under the forward direction to the area under the reverse direction is equal to the ratio of RF by R. So that I am going to show you from this equation. 
I am going to rewriting this equation AF by AR that is equal to your RF by your R. So, this is mathematically we are proving the clamping circuit theorem. So, that is the reason. For any steady state condition, it is defined as the ratio of area under the forward direction to the area under the reverse direction is equal to the ratio of resistance of the forward resistance to the resistance R by R. So, this is states the clamping circuit theorem. So, the same I shown here. So, up to this point, we are, uh, I stated that what is the clamping circuit theorem and by considering the negative clamping circuit, I proven that the statement of the clamping circuit theorem. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.